All right, so this is the first video on, a, we'll say matrix and data approximation. So the idea of this video, this video will be fairly quick, but nice and self-contained. It'll be to, to get a visual intuitive idea um, of what the singular value decomposition tells us. So something really graphical. So to do that, all I'm going to do is look at a very simple example. I'm going to plot some things, find the SVD, and just look at the, the picture and the SVD and just make some, some sort of correspondences. No proofs or anything, nothing like that. That'll come next, um, just so that we sort of visually get an idea of what's going on. So consider this like an example for inspiration. So consider this matrix. So you want to think about this matrix as a collection of four points in two dimensional space. So each column is a point. So think four columns, four points. So really we're thinking four comma one, one comma one, negative two zero, and negative three, negative two. Think of those points. So if we find the SVD, so this is what we get for our U. I'm going to approximate this a little bit. So 0 0.93, negative 0 0.36, negative 0 0.36. Remember, these are perpendicular unit vectors. That is our U. The sigma is 2 by 4, 5.855. And 1.312 and a couple of uh, zero columns and then I'm just gonna write VT because we don't really care about the V this is one thing we're gonna see that I've mentioned before is that we won't need V here now, we won't ever really use V we'll just use U so what I want to do is I want to plot a couple of things So we're going to plot, first of all, those four points. But second of all, I'm going to plot the columns of U. As vectors. So this is what we get. So we need some reasonable tick marks. I'm going to try and do this to scale to some reasonable X, Y scale. So the points we get are four comma one right here, one comma one, negative two, zero, negative three, negative two. So those are the columns. Now, if we plot the vectors, um, the first vector is negative 0.93 and negative 0.36. So that points sort of in, it's very, it's not very long. It's like this. That's U1. The second one, of course, is perpendicular. That points left and up. That's like this. These are not perfect. That's U2. Now, what I will do in addition, I'm going to extend these vectors to lines. So there is the there is the line that follows u1. That's actually not the best picture in the world. Um, let me sort of clarify something here. Um, this is not drawn to scale. This first one actually goes above this point. It's just that I didn't do the best job here. But this will be good enough. The textbook has a much more accurate picture. But this is good enough to get the idea. So this is right here. This is the line along u1 and this is the line along u2 so here are the things to note 
So one thing is that the data, if you look at these four points, they're spread out much more along U1 than along to U2. Right, so the data, the points, in other words, are spread out more along U1. Another way of saying that would be, would be, for example, that U1 is the direction of maximum spread. That's informal. We haven't really talked about what that means technically, but i.e. we could think intuitively that U1 is the direction of maximum spread spread. And then of course we note that coupled with that is that U2 is the direction, is sort of the perpendicular direction of minimum spread. In other words, if you have to describe the data as spread out in two perpendicular directions, you might say that along the U1 direction it's much more spread out and along the U2 direction it's a little, it, it's less spread out. Now the other note is that the sigmas the singular values they seem to let's say they seem to correspond so what I mean by correspond is um, so in this chapter I call the singular values S's instead of sigmas that may be a bit confusing we'll call this S1 call this S2 doesn't really matter I'm not sure why I changed in the text but that's okay but the S1, that sort of that number is larger, which seems to suggest that that's like a bigger sense of spread. So that corresponds to U1, which corresponds to more spread. Again, we need to, we need to formalize all this. S2 is um, smaller. That corresponds to U2, which is less spread. So that's a short video. I'm going to stop there because I want this as one page so you can look at it. Um, just take a second to sort of appreciate it in your head. This, we don't have evidence of any of this yet. This is actually what's going on um, with more spread and less spread. But that's what I want to do in the next video. So um, make sure this makes sense. And then the next video we'll revisit this example, but we'll, but we'll do it in a more technical, from a more technical perspective.